Murphy. Thank you, Randy. Colorado State University also updated its forecast about a week or so ago, and they're still going with an above normal season as well. So we still have that expectation, and we know that it only takes one, and it doesn't have to be a tropical system for those impacts to be upon us. Here's that look right now at those latest stats are, again, typical season for us, 12, 6, and 3. That's the average, but you can see those above normal numbers for both entities, including NOAA and Colorado State University. So again, those numbers will be coming out for you later on today with those update. So far we've been through six named storms up to Franklin now. GERT is the next name on the list. We may see GERT uh, materializing into the weekend or early next week. And in terms of frequency, we're just in the month of August. So that bell curve on the way up September 10th, your climatological peak. And so we have a ways to go through the Atlantic hurricane season before things begin to ramp down moving into October, not ramping down for Franklin. As a matter of fact, this is the longest lived tropical cyclone for the 2017 hurricane season so far. Over 48 hours, the system now back into the Gulf of Mexico, the Bay of Campeche, a little stronger winds of 65 miles per hour moving west at 13. This system has potential to become a category one hurricane later on today. So hurricane watches and warnings in place right now for the Mexican coast on the eastern side. By this afternoon, we could see winds of up to 75 miles per hour at the center, possibly up to 80 miles per hour or stronger as it makes landfall over Mexico by late tonight, early Thursday morning. So Franklin, not our concern. Then this other area of disturbed weather near the Leeward Islands up to a 40% chance now. And again, the situation is that environmental conditions not favorable right now, but in the coming days, the next five days, maybe a little bit more favorable as it approaches the eastern seaboard of the United States. That again, not our concern here. 79 degrees at the airport in Kenner winds are south at three. We have temperatures in the 70s and 80s, both sides of the lake. So it's another warm, steamy morning. That's something, of course, we've gotten used to at this point. Uh, visibilities are down. We're seeing some fog around Galliano down to four miles seven for Bogalusa and looking pretty good elsewhere. We do have lots of clouds building in this morning. Some showers pretty spotty in nature around Terrebonne Bay also pushing into the parish just east of Dulac around Biloxi. Just some spotty activity there as well. Looking at conditions across the United States, things will begin to ramp up. We still have the flooding concerns lingering for us along with that scattered storm threat today and the heat index near 100. Locally heavy rain and localized flooding still concerns today. Forecast showing temperatures temperatures near 90 and we carry those rain chances at 50 to 60% even into this evening like last night. We still have a stationary front to our north and so lots of tropical moisture building south of that front. Heavy rain possible through this afternoon also through this evening. This is 8 o'clock and some of those storms could be certainly on the south shore. Overnight quieter will move into Thursday still that chance for scattered rain and storms developing more so afternoon. That chance continues into Thursday evening as well and into Friday not letting up on those rain chances still pretty elevated rainfall potential. We could see between one and two, possibly three inches. This is an accumulation. This takes us through Saturday afternoon. So again, localized flooding still a possibility for the next several days. Unfortunately, that pattern just locked in until we can get that front away from us. 80s and 90s for highs today, upper 80s and low 90s and overnight, maybe some lingering showers and storms temps in the 70s. Here's that forecast for the next seven days and again, close to 90 degrees with the highs.